Welcome to Specific Life. Here are 20 more tips and tricks for your workshop. Let's begin. Bench cookies are awesome to have, especially when you need to do some sanding. Put your work piece on top, sand it, and they will keep everything nice and sturdy and won't move around. But let's just say you don't have these and you need some. I have a quick way to make some. All right, now we get a hole saw. This happens to be three inch, and you want to cut out some circles. This is just some old plywood scrap that I had. Works great. And so once you have these cut out, you want to get some drawer liner. This happens to be stuff you can buy at the dollar store real cheap. Cut out some squares that'll fit just over your circle. Once you have that done, get you a hot glue gun. And you want to put a little bit of glue down and attach these to the top. Give that a moment to dry and you can do the other side. Once everything has dried, you can then take some scissors and cut them out. And you have a real quick and easy bench cookie. Now here's a great way to extend the life and clean your sanding belt and sanding disc for that matter. This is a belt cleaning stick or I call it an eraser. You run this back and forth across your belt as it runs and it cleans off all this excess sawdust and extends the life. Let me show you how. There we go, much cleaner. There are a few places on here that are still marked up and that's because those are either the belt is slightly damaged there or maybe you have some of the sap that has embedded itself and you can't really get that out. But for the most part, I just cleaned off a good 95 plus percent of this belt and so it'll be great next time I need to use it. Now a bandsaw is an awesome tool, but sometimes twisting up their blade for storage can just be a challenge. Let me show you a quick way to do it. Now for a small bandsaw, you can put it on a table like this. You wanna take two hands, holding one holding it sturdy, and you wanna flip this one for evolution. So example, you wanna flip it once, and then flip it twice. But as you do in the second one, you wanna move in towards the other hand, and boom, it is now together. Now you can do the same concept standing up. You wanna put one side under your foot, take your hand here, do it a little bit invert backwards, then just do one full revolution as you're going towards the other side. And there you go. Now if you've ever tried to cut any kind of plastic, especially thin plastic with a circular saw, there's a good chance it was either really jagged cut or it just shattered on you. Well here's a little trick. Normally, when you have the blade going this way, you have your aggressive cuts going forward. If you actually take your blade and flip it upside down, just for like the plastics, then you'll be cutting with the back of each of the teeth, therefore making really, really small cuts at a time. And that should give you a nice clean cut. I don't recommend doing this with wood, but with real thin plastic, it should work great. All right, let me show you how it's gonna work on this piece of polycarbonate. There we go, nice clean cut, and you don't have to worry about anything shattering on you. Now let's say you have an existing hole in a piece of wood, and you realize it is just a little too small. For example, this is one inch, and say you needed one and a quarter. Or if you're gonna use a Forstner bit, this can be a little bit difficult, because the little tip here usually grabs onto the wood in the center, and allows everything to stay nice and even as it goes down, but in this case, well, it's just gonna wander. You're gonna have cuts and just gashes everywhere if you try to use this. That is, unless you use a specific guide. And one you can make real easy is just take another piece of wood, take the size of the Forstner bit you need and create a hole with it. And you want to then clamp this hole directly centered over that hole. And then this will allow you to cut this hole bigger and not have a bunch of gashes everywhere. There you go. Now whenever you're trying to cut a long or maybe even a wide piece of wood, sometimes having a roller stand can be very handy in those situations. But let's say you don't have one, but you still need something similar. Here's a very simple way to make one. This is just a basic paint roller, and you want to attach it to something real sturdy. Get yourself a clamp, clamp it right in place, and there you go, little roller stand. Now anytime you want to make smaller pieces of sandpaper, you can always rip it, but that's going to leave a jagged edge. You could cut it, but that's just going to dull your scissors. Or you can use this tip. Take a hacksaw blade and you want to screw it to a piece of wood. This could be a workbench, this could be your sandpaper holder, whatever you like. I just have it on a piece of random board here. But then you take your sandpaper, you want to slide it in place. 
And then as you go to pull it, you want to pull it in an upward fashion. And there you go. Nice, relatively clean cut. And you can do this several times so you can get a bunch of strips of paper out of one large sheet. Here's another little trick to get some glue in some of those really tight cracks. I at first clamp my vacuum hose to a piece of wood that's on my workbench so it'll hold it nice and still. I then added a large bead of glue across the top of the crack. Now while I hover just above the vacuum cleaner nozzle, while it's turned on, I'm gonna carefully pull apart on this wood and it should suck the glue down inside. Then just repeat this process a couple times until you start to see a little bit of glue oozing out of the crack down on the bottom. Then you can wipe off the excess and clamp it down. Now anytime you plan on using epoxy, it's a good idea to mix it in a plastic container such as these. And that way after everything is fully cured, you can easily go back in and crack it. You can then get some of this other epoxy out and you can continue to reuse these containers. Now these anti-fatigue mats are great when you're standing around the shop for a long time, but they're also great for your back and shoulders when you need to work on your car. And if you plan on going camping, stick a couple of these into your sleeping bag and you'll definitely feel a difference. Now whenever you're trying to cut down a large sheet of plywood, there's a good chance you're probably going to do it on the ground with a circular saw. Now the safest way I've found to do this is to actually go get a large sheet of foam insulation from a local home improvement store. You can usually get it in the one or two inch versions. Now to do that, you want to set your blade so it is just barely below the thickness of your plywood. And that way it'll only be slightly into the foam. You rest everything on top of the foam wherever you're going to be cutting and you cut just straight through the wood onto the foam. Great thing about it is you can use this foam over and over again for multiple multiple projects and that way you can do it easily and don't have to worry about cutting into anything below your wood. Now if you happen to spill a bunch of your screws you can go around and pick each one of them up individually or you can get a heavy duty magnet then take a piece of plastic wrap it around the magnet and you can quickly gather up your screws. And then to empty this, all you gotta do is just pull the plastic back off and all the screws come with you. Sometimes when you're gluing together a joint, especially in a corner here, you'll get glue squeeze out, but it's just really hard to get that out. That is, unless you use a straw. You may wanna pinch it together a little bit on one side to give it a little bit of a corner joint there, but then you just take it, press it hard into the joint. You can easily clean up that glue quickly and easily. And here's a great tip so you don't ever have to worry about losing your trash can lid. On one of the handles, if you can drill a hole through the top and through the bottom, mine already had a hole in the bottom, so that's nice. I've just attached some zip ties. Make sure there's still enough room so you can lift up on the handle, but overall that allows you to completely take the lid off, do whatever you need, and put it back on, and you don't ever have to worry about losing the lid. Have you ever been trying to inch up on a cut? Just here's a mark right here on this piece of wood and I want to cut it down so there's not too much sanding left, but I want to do it real carefully. Let me show you how to do it on a miter saw. Now the trick is here is to bring the wood up to the blade. Now you want to make sure you have it all the way back to the fence, but you also want to provide some pressure in against the blade. In other words, you want to push in pretty hard and that way it'll slightly bend the blade in that direction. And then when you come back up, the blade will spring back to standard position and when you come down, it'll make a very small cut. Let me show you. There we go, exactly what I wanted. Have you ever been working on a project, add a tool and you need a pencil to make a mark, but the closest pencil is across the room and now you have to drop everything you're doing and go get it? Well, here's a great way to solve that problem. All right, to solve this problem, you're gonna need some pencils, you're gonna need some real strong, small magnets, some heat shrink, and a lighter. What you wanna do is you want to attach one of the magnets to each of your pencils. And you're gonna do that by wrapping the heat shrink over it and just squeezing it all together with a little bit of heat. Once that is done, now you can have a number of pencils that you can easily put on your tools and you don't have to worry about running out and finding them. 
Now, whenever you get a new tool and you have the instructions or the manual for it, it's a good idea to get your phone and take a picture of it immediately before you start assembling anything, because there's a good chance that this could get torn or misplaced or even accidentally get thrown away. It happens. So, then I would take your phone and then transfer that over to your computer. That way you can store it long term on your computer just in case, of course, these get lost. You need to go work on your tool or have something replaced or whatever you need to do. You have them on hand. You never lose them. Now, if you're trying to clamp something tight together, you can definitely count on a seat clamp. The only downside is there's a good chance you're going to scar up whatever you're trying to clamp together in these jaws. That is, unless you get some felt pads. By adding these thick felt pads to right where the clamping pressure is, there's much less likely you will scar up whatever you're clamping together. Now, if you've ever tried to install some of these screw-in hooks, if you're just doing one, no big deal. But if you got a bunch of them to install, man, your fingers start to hurt and it's just hard to twist it in. Here's a great little tip. Take an additional hook and put it in your drill. Put it on a low setting and just, just start screwing it in. It's a great way to save your fingers and get the job done quicker. And last but definitely not least, Make sure all of your large tools are on some kind of a rolling base, whether it's casters, maybe even just some rolling dollies or something so you can move them around your shop or for in any case you have to move, you can easily roll them onto a truck and off at your new location. Now, if you can see here, what well, my wife loves to call this is a New York style shop. It's long and narrow. So I'm constantly moving my tools around, especially the big ones, so I can have the best area and the best place to position them so I can get large pieces of wood to fit in. In any case, make sure all of your stuff has rollers. Now there are 20 more tips and tricks that I hope you can use in your workshop so you can have a lot more fun while you're making stuff. So get out in your shop and have fun building. Our tips and trips, trips? Ah, roller, uh, paint roller, why can I not say that? More tips and trips, I hope. Trips, did it again. Oh, and have fun building. Why did I say that twice? Let's try it again. All right, tips and trips, trips, wow.